Wood is fascinating. Wood in video games is not real. But if it was real, how good would it be? My friend Eden is a furniture maker who loves and knows wood. And today they are going to rate the quality of the woodworking in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom slash Breath of the Wild. Woohoo! All right, let's find some wood. What's it? Right. All right, first up, let's talk about the furniture in Hateno Village. We're gonna start with this dining set. Um, so obviously we wanna talk about aesthetics, but I also wanna talk about realism. I wanna talk about how they made it. What are we seeing here? Uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing some stuff that I like. This is built very much similarly to uh, Ulfric's table in Skyrim. You can see the half lap joints where the legs kind of cross into each right, other. That's these on the end. That's those on the end. And you can even see what looks like should be a stretcher you know, poking through the ends of both sides of the legs, but there's no wood in between underneath, right. where normally in both Elfric's table and in a table you would make. In the real world, you would want to just have one long piece of wood passing through both of those, which would add a lot of structural integrity to the table. One of the things that you mentioned about Ulfric's table in Skyrim is that you could remove the stretcher and collapse the table to take it places. Yes. Would that work in this case? Uh, hypothetically, it would, but I would say I'd be apprehensive to not glue them in because they are so thin that they could easily be knocked out, whereas right. a whole stretcher would have a lot harder time being moved in and out of the in and out of the piece. Something I do want to say about those little rectangular ends there, if you want to get a good look going, is that you can see they did a really good job. They have rendered the end grain of the wood. Oh, yeah. That, that is, was a big thing last time. That is something Skyrim, they all just gave it kind of the same side grain wood texture, whereas this, you can see that it distinctly looks like the end grain of a tree. In fact, you can see that is from the very middle of a tree, what we could call the pith. And beyond that, you can see this is uh, something that happens to pith in real life. We see cracks expanding from the very center of it. Really interesting, uh, really nice detail. I like that a lot. Can we take a moment to zoom in on the quality of the textures on the end grain here? Because it honestly, yeah. not only do you see the end grain of the tree, right? You can mm -hmm. see the rings. Each one is different. It's right. not even the same. Like, they're like different types of trees. Absolutely. And what I do find interesting, you would probably not see this in real life, uh, is that almost every piece has the pith in it. You can see right, it's the true. middle of where those circular rings all meet up in the in the very center. And that is something you want to avoid in real life because, as I mentioned, that pith is going to naturally want to crack and break right. apart as the wood ages. So it's not something you really want in your furniture generally. Yeah. Can we take a second to look at this slightly more ornate cabinet? It doesn't look complex, but I'm curious if this is like realistic if this makes sense you know it seems uh, very simple it does seem realistic and it does seem very simple both at the same time i would wager that what we're looking at here is um two two very thick pieces on the end creating both like the legs and the side so to speak i would guess that those are tenoned into the top uh maybe one long wide tenon which you could think of as a dado one thing that i think is really neat is the way that these i guess drawers so to speak are constructed they're not really drawers it's yeah it almost looks like you would because you've made things like this I've mm -hmm. seen with these little like spinny hinge thing or whatever the hell you want to call them yeah you know, little tiny thingies little nougat latches I, I like that nougat latches yeah what's interesting to me about this is that it's it looks to me like what we would call a drop front where Almost you like would, it would fall open right exactly you would twist that little piece of wood out of the way which would allow it to fall open you can see there are iron hinges on it so it wouldn't just fall you, all you the way off like, like a, you could put anything you don't want to be like a pizza oven visible almost. right a, very cold pizza oven. Recipe book. Recipe book, your nasty magazines, uh, your, your Cobblins Weekly, about, you know what I'm know saying? I don't know anything about that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really neat thing. It's not something that I've really seen a lot. That Did you kind say of drop weekly? Front. Book Cobblins Every Weekly, week? man. I, hey, another one? Three right. legs. Three legs. Now, you might think that's weird looking at I it. I do think it's weird. But there is a lot of historical precedent for three-legged chairs, and uh, they're perfectly fine, actually, as long as you orient the legs correctly. Personally, I couldn't speak to this. I actually might be a little suspicious that this would be tippy Looks like it would to be the tippy. right or the left. You gotta spread um, those legs out. Right, you would want more splay on the yeah. front legs and even a little bit of rake on the back leg would be nice. Is this then like tenoned into the the butt part? Right, or, we can only what? assume that there is an internal tenon in there. It's That would be a really weak way of constructing yeah. this. I would much it rather weak. see that lapped into the the back so that it is, uh, you know, there's a joint cut out yeah. of the seat that that can fit into. So this realistically would not make a very strong chair at all. Seems pretty sturdy. No, that, there you go. I've been proven wrong. All right, so all told, how do you feel about the furniture 
in Hateno Village. Tables, chairs, buckets, stools. I'm going to give it a solid B. A solid B, okay. Yes, the weird stretcher that's not a stretcher on the table off puts me a little bit and the back connection on the chair i think is pretty weak but all in all I, i'm really liking a lot of the furniture in here and the details are fantastic of course but it's nintendo all right a b yeah give a it b. a b give a b is a b. good All right, next up, we're in the Rito Village bird people building tables, believe it or not. Is it a good table? You know, Austin, it's a great table. It's a great table. I, I might call it a great table. Wow. Yeah. Sky, um, I would have expected Skyrim to be so much better than this, no, but it is not it It's is not doing it. Not doing it so far. Yeah, this is definitely beating Skyrim out. First of all, I just really like the shape of this top. They've managed to make it kind of decorative design just by the way they cut the ends of the boards. You know, there's no carving, yeah. there's no oh, no special joinery or anything like that. Jump scare, there he is. It, it kind of has a kind of feathery aspect to it, you know what I mean? It could kind of... Oh, that's a great point. Working off Yeah, of, it does. Mm -hmm. Nintendo. See, Nintendo, they're, they, they're Nintendo. smart over there. What they got a lot of thoughts in those brains. Uh, and, it, you know, I mean, it just goes further to solidify the identity of the Rito. That's one thing that I found while I was playing Breath of the Wild is that every area and every kind of race yeah. does have a really solid kind of identity that goes beyond just the way fact they look and maybe even like act differently. That's too, awesome. The, right down to the woodwork. Exactly. Exactly. Huh. Um, in terms of the stuff under the table, like in right. the, sort of the pieces that are not aesthetic but are functional. Yeah. What do we got going on? Pretty simple trestle construction. That was what, that's what we'd call these. Um, these kind of two separate wide legs with very wide feet. You know feet. what they look like? They look kind of like bird's, bird's feet, don't feet. they? Yeah. They look a lot like bird's this feet. This is incredible. And I, it's interesting because I was questioning at first you can see from the far leg that the um, little toe, so to speak, that's facing us yeah. on the close leg doesn't go through. Yeah, it doesn't. And you would expect it to on, it a, in, on a normal right. table. Um, but you would, makes, you, So you're saying you would expect there to be another one of those toes on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Like they would kind of be lapped in with each other so that it would, you know, kind right. of crisscrossing into each other. But they just chopped it pieces. off so that it would look like their own feet. Exactly. You see how on the other one you see this little triangle? Right. Is that a, a possibly a, a, what was it called, a tenon? A tenon. Is that the tenon of the the toe? I was thinking about that. Maybe. Do, do you think or we maybe can get just a carving closer? I think it's just a carving from here. Because it looks like it is existing like within the grain. Yeah, it definitely looks like a carving. Yeah, you can yeah, see the does. grain runs right through it. So that whatever tenon or lap or whatever is holding the toe in is not coming all the way through right. the other side. It is interesting that they put that in there. because I Little details. Uh, little details, right. I, I don't really know what purpose Man, it serves. Nintendo, always yeah. dressed to impress. Like, yeah. that's crazy to me that they just think about, like, who in ever, right. if we weren't doing this right now... <laughs> Nobody <laughs> on planet Earth, and the people that are watching this are among like the first two thousand people in ever, ever aside from the people that made the game to ever go. Holy shit, those it's are bird's bird foot, feet. and it's, it's really a feather good. table. Like that's crazy. It's really impressive. It's just meant to sit there and ambiently right. You, you, increase I'm sure you absorb your, like, it to exactly, some extent. Yeah, your but, brain yeah. notices it, but. Wow. Really think about it. Yeah, it's what really a good. table. Yeah, great table. So in total, I'm almost nervous to ask, but what would you give this table? 10 out of 10. A, a plus. A plus. I'm doing it. An a I plus. I love this table. Oh I my God. I love the design. I love the choices. It's all structurally sound. And I mean, really, the feet and feathers, the motif that it's bringing together yes. is really good. Like, I want to make this table in you real life. You should. It's a nice table. Yeah. You So in Lookout Landing, I want to start with a table as well, because we've looked at a lot of tables today, and I want you to compare this to the other tables, because you know what I notice? It's different. It We're is. not just copy-pasting tables. No. Look at the legs on the, the, the sitting part. Yes. Terrible. Well, yes, the, the bench. Yeah, yeah, it looks like they just kind of took took some two by fours and popped them on top of some concrete blocks. Well, not concrete, stone. I don't think there's any evidence that concrete exists in in the world of of hyrule but uh yeah some some cut stone blocks now the table itself looks more complex it is yes very much so i think it's interesting because the bench is seems like you know a, a kind of rebel refugee camp put together right. very quickly we need yeah. somewhere to sit but then the table is clearly very well made maybe they salvaged it from the ruins of hyrule castle yeah. or or something else maybe that's a salvage piece versus these benches that were made very quickly it looks okay. like our legs are tenoned in 
to that curved uh, that curved right. aspect there. Looks like they're tenoned into that, which would take a lot of work, because not only do you have to cut the mortise and tenon at an angle, which is already difficult, but you would also need to shape the shoulders of the tenon to that curved aspect. Is this just not a way people would make tables, or is this something someone would do, but only in the context of this is it's not, fancy? This isn't really a way that you see tables made in the real world, at least none that I have experienced. Once again, there are a lot of uh, woodworking cultures that I might not be experienced with. I know that this was made by Japanese company so right. then it might be more of a japanese style thing i do actually kind of see a little bit of a shinto gate oh uh, yeah you know that's what i mean aesthetically from here point. so that might be part of it but yeah this way of kinding of kind of joining the legs into a tenon into the side which then has it looks like the top is almost nailed on to that yeah, side like it's, piece it's the, just kind of set on just top a, yeah it's a kind of weird way to construct it it looks very nice yeah um but it, it doesn't make a lot of sense from just our, you know, kind of the Western tradition of, yeah. of how we make tables. But it would it would stand. It would hold. It's also just really interesting in contrast because we were talking about this before we started this segment about how so much of Lookout Landing is like wood that's just like tied together and thrown together and right. these benches on blocks. And then you have this really quite ornate table. Yeah. And given how much thought is generally put into it, it almost makes you think, well, it must be intentionally exactly. whatever. And so I'm curious yeah. if there's any other furniture in here that is also yeah, cause they randomly just ornate. Yeah, because they could have just thrown the same table from Village in here. And right. honestly, it would feel a lot more congruous with, right. the, with the benches and with so the kind who, of whole vibe. Who did this? Who did this? And are they who getting fired table? Right. For, exactly. for doing, doing a bad <laughs> table? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this sort of desk situation this looks very straightforward yes right even i can tell that that is tenoned into right through we've got tenons three tenons there in the yes. side there nothing does anything about this stand out to you as being uh, um, perplexing no not really i think it's pretty neat i think at the top there we can see how this uh the back leg so to speak is just straight but the front leg is at an yeah. angle which makes a lot of sense structurally but that means that the tenon is likely coming in straight up and down with the top piece, but at an angle right. to the bottom leg, which is something that's pretty neat. Oh, then here, let's look at the bottom there, what looks like that foot. That's let's interesting. It. it looks, you can tell from the grain, it does not look like these are two separately pe joined pieces. I'm talking about the angled leg yeah, and then the kind of straight foot that we see there. So it looks a lot like one piece of wood that just has a sharp bend there, which you could find in nature. Or like a tree. Like a tree, exactly. So it kind of looks like they found uh, one piece of wood with this kind of sharp bend in it, and it's entirely likely that they took both of those legs, right, the right, left, right. and the front left, the same. cut the same piece out, huh. um, what we would think of as book matching in a lot of cases. I'm seeing, you're seeing a lot of paneled glue ups which is where you'd glue multiple thinner boards together to make a wider piece, right. um, which implies that they've got some pretty powerful glue here in Hyrule, which is yeah. interesting. Because historically, if you look at older pieces of furniture in the real world, you won't see as many paneled glue ups because we had wider trees to work from. And this is a bummer. Now we cut all the big wide trees down, so you just can't get boards that wide anymore. Oh, dang. Yeah. Because I guess you need, like, you can't just plant more of those trees. I mean, you can, but they take a while right. to grow. It's like yeah. hundreds of years to get yeah. something that no, wide. No, exactly. Literally. We chopped of them all years. down already, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're all cut down dang. pretty much. That's horrible. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can Fuck. see there. <laughs> That's terrible. There are some pictures that you should you'd maybe throw up on the screen of... Um, I think I used one in the Skyrim. Uh, yeah, guys actually, with yeah. sitting next to the, the redwoods. All like, they they're all like, cut. it's like when you see the, them, how they like murdered every bison. And they're right, just, like, exactly. Sitting and they're on top like, of the yeah, pile. this kicks ass. Yeah, yeah. just terrible. Uh, yeah, just yeah, awful. There, here's a clue that they probably brought some stuff from Hyrule Castle, right? right? You got these you, big boxes. Exactly, and even the, the marking of Hyrule Castle. Um, I find it very interesting that this little cross beam so to speak on Over the here. side is in one corner all the way but not in the other corner all the right. you know what i mean yeah. it's like they almost cut it short by it's accident it's like the dvd bouncing right it's, and it's not never quite, quite in the corner i don't really understand yeah. what the purpose of that might be uh but it is a very interesting choice and we can see actually on top you got a batten you know we kind of talked about right. board and batten Ooh. being an alternative to a breadboard that's doing the same thing where that strip of wood running across the grain is going to keep that top from warping a bunch right. which is something you see all the time in shipping crates especially older ones Talk I don't, how do we feel maybe. about pura's bed well hey like to hey be um first Pura's of all bed. straw yes or, why are you doing that well that's uh historically bed mattresses were usually stuffed with straw what are you a bed expert now i'm not a bed expert i actually learned that at like colonial williamsburg when i was 10 oh. coming across if someone came to you and said Build me Pura's bed. 
How much would it cost, do you think? To handmade. Handmade, We're yeah. We're not talking tenths of thousands of dollars. You know, I mean, there are a lot of considerations like species. You know, let this looks kind of like walnut with how dark it is, but they always make all wood game wood darker than wood is okay. in real life generally. I, I think maybe a, a couple you know, a grand or two. And that's for, you know, the handwork and the attention to detail. I would 2000 bucks, sure. you can sleep like Pura. Every, exactly. And wait, wait, I want to say something oh, else sorry, about sorry. it. One thing I like a lot is that this thing, which is, which is effectively forming the quote-unquote headboard, that, that piece of wood on top is curved, but we can see it's curved with the grain. It's a natural curve. It almost seems like they... Uh, either rived it or just cut it along the grain out of how the oh, tree nice. was already formed. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and it doesn't look actually quite symmetrical. Right, exactly. Well, you can almost envision it being the branch of a tree. Right, exactly. That's so neat. I think that's neat. Yeah, and that's something you see a lot, especially with chairs historically, where people would just take a root or a branch or a piece of wood that was curved from the tree and use that for the armrest or the back or something of a chair. All right, so all told, how is the furniture and lookout landing? How's the woodworking? What are we feeling? Uh, I'm liking lookout landing more than Hatena Village. Okay. I think there's more consistency in most of what we're looking at. So I'm going to give it an A. I like most of what I saw, a lot of realism. And once again, as we kind of talked about, I, I like that it feels a lot of the pieces feel like a refugee camp, like things right. that then either salvaged or put together very quickly. Yep. Okay, this is an unusual one. Very if much you, so. you know, if you want to, if you want to tap out, that's fine. Talk to me about this bed. So I like this table a lot. This table? That's a... <laughs> what is a bed but a table for the body? Right. You know? That's a, that's a good point. Uh, I like this bed a lot. Um, aesthetically, I really I really think it's very nice. Much more naturalistic, which makes sense for where it is, you know, in the, in the Korok village. Uh, but what's interesting to me is that we've got these big bent pieces. And while we talked about the bent wood on that... Uh, that on Pura's bed, this actually looks much more intentionally bent. Those are very uniform curves, you know right. what I'm saying, that are joining all these pieces. So it seems like the Koroks have been getting into some steam bending. Whoa. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that you would see this on This is a, a foggy place, so there's a lot of humidity. Right, a lot of humidity. Once again, the headboard is not actually a headboard, you know? There's nowhere to... Yeah, useless you, as like pretty a... pretty useless as yeah. a headboard. Uh, one thing is, I would like to comment on the joinery, but there is the bedding is kind of covering up all of the, you know, all the corners. It looks like the, they're just sitting up next to each other almost. Well, it's going in there a little bit. No, it is. No, that is. It's actually lapped in there a little bit, which is a pretty neat, a pretty I'm neat touch. So yeah, anyway. we've got some what seems like some half lap joinery. Maybe they're using some kind of forest magic to really hold it together, and then steam bent the the other parts. Once again, it it almost looks like as opposed to being wood shaped into a round, those might themselves be branches or saplings even right. really small thin trees that they then bent into into that shape actually we can confirm that it's a sapling because we have a little leaf coming out oh, of it wow. which is really cute uh and then really quick mm -hmm. because there's no other furniture in this area right. just talk to me about what cool furniture i could make if i chopped on the great deku tree Right. So, frankly, the Deku tree would not yield a lot of good material for furniture because a lot of the times what we're looking for in a tree, we want very straight material. And as right. you can see from the Deku tree, he is gnarled and All curved. Sorts and of, yeah. So, you know, maybe cutting into the central section, you're probably going to get some very straight stuff right there in the middle. But most of him is going to go to waste, I would say. Yeah, he's it's almost gonna... like those those live oaks. Right, like here. the live oaks around here. Yeah, they're not going to make a lot of very good furniture because right. they are ex just inherently inherently very gnarled and right. twisted. Okay, so the bed, the Korok bed, what are we thinking? A, B, C, D. Uh, I mean, it felt... I didn't hear anything wrong with it, necessarily. Um, I'm gonna give it a B. A B, okay. Because I'm not very convinced by the what we can see of the joinery. There might be more going on internally that the bedding is covering up, but uh, I don't really see how it's staying together, necessarily. But it is so beautiful. Okay, Hyrule Castle. Bench. This would be tens would of thousands be, yes. of dollars. Yeah, very, very expensive. So is there anything about this that we would consider unrealistic from what you can tell? Not from what I can see. Joining room makes sense. It's likely joined by mortise and tenon at the edges there. I doubt that, I think this is one long board and then the legs are somehow either just glued to the front there or maybe joined with like some kind of internal tenon or something. Oh, I didn't notice how thick that back is. That is very that hefty. Is thick back. Very thick. But I mean, you know, no reason not to, I guess. Hypothetically, the 
wider the board, the less warping there's going to be. So it, I guess that would be a reason to do that. Generally, though, when I do see these kinds of pieces, historically, it's it's not going to be quite that thick. But yeah, the legs I find interesting because they're almost, we talked about a cabriole leg in the Skyrim yeah, video. Yeah, a little they're bit. Almost that shape, but they kind of curve in without curving back out. Yeah. But they're still, they are shaped feet, you know, like with an intention to look almost like some kind of animal foot. Right. Uh, you can see volutes carved at the arms. Oh, these little swirls? Yeah, like what you'd see at the top of a violin. Like that. Yeah, we call that a volute. Very interesting carvings. They almost have a kind of like what we think of nowadays as like a Celtic, you know, energy yeah. to them. Ooh, that's almost like a bird motif there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Is it's that... like a wing and I think a bird's face there. It's hard to see. That's interesting. Could be a Ritu perhaps or uh, Rito. Rito. Oops. careful now Oopsies. yeah no there's definitely a bird motif here huh. though i'm really liking once again all this carving is very complex and the upholstery i'm not an upholsterer i can't speak to it but it uh looks fine to me looks good it's really comfy let's take a quick glance at some of these chairs yes. this one hopefully will give us a good look at the back i remember you saying at one point that generally speaking the backs of things will be could be left very sort of uh rough and ready Yes. But I guess the back of a chair might be visible. We can actually, there's yeah. one right here, oh, too. Oh, wow, if that's you even better. That. Yeah, so it is true. Generally, chairs are one of the exceptions to the back historically uh, because chairs are going to be viewed from all angles. Right. You always want the back to look as nice as the front. However, it is a little odd for the back to look this nice. That is a whole lot of carving to put on a chair. It's the back. 1%. That's right, exactly. It's these rich Hyrule uh, bureaucrats. Aristocrats is That's what, what I'm is, looking yeah. for. Bureaucrats, bureaucrats we like. Aristocrats. Like, well, depends on the bureaucrat. Oh. Um, but yes, these if rich they, If they work, for example, for like someone who maybe tallies up labor statistics. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's we like kind of, them. We appreciate that kind of bureaucracy here. So here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Assuming that the legs are tenoned in, mm -hmm. how much money would you put on there actually being the remaining holes on the bottom of this chair? Ooh. Do you think they went to that length of actually having holes that these legs would have been tended into That's an on the question. bottom of this model chair when I, I, when I walk around. What do you I think? I don't think they did. You don't think so? I don't think so, no. All right, here we go. Drum roll. Mm, they didn't. They did not. So, yeah. bummer. That's, bummer. So there, we do I, see a board there, so there is sure. something for yeah. the legs to go into. Although, once again, just from looking at the whole piece, it would have to be a pretty thin board, which wouldn't yeah. provide a lot of strength. Okay, so we can see where they join, actually, here. Yeah, there's just nothing. There's just nothing. Huh. Yeah. He said, no one's going to look at this. Well. But they were wrong. They were wrong. They were wrong. Game developers tremble. All right, so I've got, now I've got a, a royal... I don't even know what this is. It's a cabinet. Cabinet? Um, I mean, the, the cabinet. The thing about cabinets is they go by many names. Very ornate. This seems Extremely simple. Extremely ornate. Uh, well, In construction? it's deceptively simple. As someone who just built a very big cabinet true. recently. True, yeah, true. When I was thinking about making that cabinet, I thought, oh, this is pretty simple. And then I started making it, and I realized the error in my ways. <laughs> I find one thing really interesting about this is that it looks like we have three doors on the top here, right? Right. How are, how do you open them? Yeah, because they're not, they're not going to be like those fancy like click click where they like you push them in and right. then they pop yeah, out. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, that's, that's like from modern. the 70s. The drawers look really nice. Um, although I will say from a design and proportion standpoint, it's kind of busted because we can see on the middle drawer, it almost looks like the molding gets cut off, right? Yeah. Where the divider is. And then on the side drawers, we have full molding on the inside edges. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. it gets cut off on the outside edges. This is some Skyrim-esque texture laziness. Right. This is one of, this is one one of the, the few, few times in this game we've we seen really where it had looks to like dig they for just kind of slapped stuff on there. Yeah. And it's yeah. on the, the middle drawer of one cabinet <laughs> in, in the Castle. optional dining room of Hyrule Castle. Exactly. That's funny. This uh, on the bottom here, mm -hmm. what is the... There's all these lines making it look like the it's the boards would run sort of away from us, mm -hmm. but it's clearly this way. Yeah, it, it is weird because it definitely looks like the grain is running lengthwise from side to side, right to left, right? right? Which would make the most sense, uh, both structurally and just from how you build stuff. And also, looking at what looks like those pieces of end grain sticking out, it doesn't even look like the end grain we've seen in the rest yeah. of the game, which has been it looks really detailed weird. this. It just looks weird. Honestly, and they think the same thing is happening on the top, right? Yeah. Just, maybe they're trying, maybe it's intended to look decorative, but it doesn't to me. No, because it's not like even or nice looking right, really yeah. even. Yeah, this, this cabin is kind of a stinker, I gotta say. Stinker cabin, all right. Okay, last piece of furniture. Last piece of furniture. How do we feel about this thing? This table. Uh, I like it and I don't. I'm already seeing one problem. 
Is it that same texture? That on same the weird edge texture that we were on the edge. What at? is yeah. going on? It's a really odd choice. Where is this imported um, from? Um, I like that we have stretchers that are coming all the way yep. through. Yeah, yeah. They're clearly a blind tenon instead of a through tenon, which is fine. Uh, I like the carving and the shaping on the stretchers. It really adds to the idea that this isn't a royal household. Household. One thing I find really weird is it almost seems like the legs or the trestles, we could say, the pieces, the uprights holding right. everything together, are a plywood when you say plywood you mean uh plywood i not you know i'm not thinking like hardware store plywood any plywood is any time that you are gluing wood together usually in thin sheets um on opposing grain directions right so, like you see here right so edge. it's weird because if anything upright like this you would want the grain to be running up and down and you, right. it's clearly running side to side here which doesn't make any sense but then if you look at the side it really does look like four thinner pieces of wood that have been sandwiched together yeah and if they do have opposing grain right that outside piece the grain is running right to left next piece up and down next right. piece right to left next piece up, as plywood is then it would add some strength to it but it wouldn't be stronger than if it was just one piece running right. up and down the entire time. So why do that if you're the royal family, gajillions of dollars? Right, you, you know? can afford to have just a, a nice, strong, thick upright yeah. for your trestles. Um, but it does really seem like plywood, especially with the grain running side yeah. to side on the edges that we can see. So that's very odd to me. How do um, we feel about the? How do we feel about the board? The wood texture here. I like it for the most part. It mostly looks like one board, but actually on the right here. It looks like the texture there on the maybe the right most third of this. Uh -huh. That looks like a kind of separate texture. Do you see that? We have these long grand cathedrals. Those, yeah. Those running towards us, which you would only see at the center of a board. So that's a little odd to me personally. But, you know, who am I to judge? Hi, we're all family. You are here to judge. That's literally what I mean. Yeah, to do that's and I nice. canceled them earlier, actually. So yeah. that's a great point. Okay, so all things considered, I kind of left on a sour note with these. Right, Started I Started off kind of good, but what are we thinking? Hyrule family woodworking. Um, you wouldn't let me do pluses or minuses, so I'm gonna have to give it a C. Whoa! This segment reminded me more of how it felt to do Skyrim with right. you, whereas the rest of this was like sort of exciting and how much detail there was. Exactly. This did not feel so good, so no. a C it is. A C it a C is, it yep. Is. Sorry, Hyrule Royal family. Double canceled. What? All right, so what are you giving this game as a whole for its woodworking furniture? It is getting a solid B. A solid B. I a had a feeling. B. Yeah, I, I mean, was pulling for an A, no, especially with that bird table. The bird table was the highlight for sure, but I gotta say, Hyrule Castle really brought it down for me yeah. a lot, and everything else was kind of in that middling B, yeah. maybe an A range. Uh, so I don't think there was enough A to yeah. get in an A. It's really unfortunate. Yeah, I was, but, I was pulling for it, but. I know, but it was it was still still pretty pretty darn good, so good. especially a huge step up from Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, if you thought this video was a huge step up from the last one, leave a comment down below saying that you liked it. We'd appreciate that very much. If you want to follow Eden, there'll be a link to all that down in the description. If you want to support the channel, Patreon's the place to do that. The names you see scrolling by on the screen right now are my Patreon supporters. So thank you very much to them. Of course, I have another song for you, as I always do. Please enjoy it today, and we will see you in the next video. <laughs>